Now I'd like to introduce a member of our faculty, Dr. Gary Marr, who is here this evening representing the Suffolk County Human Rights Commission. Like the great experiment that is America, Stony Brook has always had a complicated relationship with diversity. There's always a gap between our ideals and reality. As we gather tonight to remember the life and mourn the tragic death of Marcelo Lucero, we reach for that ideal of diversity as a shared value. Marcelo came from Ecuador to participate in our American experiment. Working in America for some 16 years, more years than the ages of the youth who hunted, hunted him down, stabbed him, and left him to die in what should have been common ground. To paraphrase Marcelo's brother, people came for the American dream. Sometimes it is wonderful, sometimes they die. Today we can rededicate ourselves to closing the perilous gap between our reach and our grasp of the great resource that is our diversity. Like so many of us, our families and our friends, Marcelo was an immigrant. All Americans, except for Native Americans, came from families who emigrated from somewhere else. How could this violent and hateful crime happen just as we have elected our first African American president? What has happened in America? Is that America supposed to be the land of the free in which Lady Liberty's torch is a beacon of hope, saying to the world, in the words of the famous poem of Emma Lazarus, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. What has happened to this ideal when our youth cruise the streets in search of beaners, a derogatory term for Latino men in general, on whom they can vent their frustrations and violence. When the economy goes bust, why do we blame and then beat to death those who do our dirtiest work? Maybe we can find an answer in Molly's Pilgrim where the central character's classmates tease her for her appearance and her accent. When Molly and her classmates are asked to contribute a pilgrim doll to Thanksgiving, Molly's mother, a Russian Jewish immigrant, asks Molly to help with her project. What's a pilgrim, Molly's mother asks. A pilgrim is someone who comes to America seeking religious freedom, her daughter responds. When Molly makes the next day for school, she's mortified to discover that her mother has fixed a doll to look like herself, a Russian Jewish pilgrim instead of a Plymouth Rock pilgrim. What's wrong, her mother asks. Molly stuffs down her doll and her feelings. She goes to school, and when her teacher asks to see the doll, Molly reluctantly removes the doll from her bag. The children's laughter is agonizing. What kind of pilgrim is that? Molly's teacher responds to their teaching by sharing that Thanksgiving is rooted in the Jewish festival of Sukkot, the festival of tabernacles. At that teachable moment, the children learn that it takes all kinds of immigrants to make America, and that immigrants are still coming to America seeking freedom. Whether you're a Native American, a child of immigrants, a child of slaves, a combination of all of these or others, you're part of the most diverse nation in the world. No other nation boasts the constant waves of immigrant diversity who keep turning dreams into reality. Even our history of prejudice and our dreams deferred, America remains a place and an idea where pilgrim immigrants from every stripe sacrifice everything to seek freedom and pursue happiness. Let me speak for a moment about Asian immigrants. Most Americans know that the Chinese labor and technology built the Transcontinental Railroad, which was completed in 1869. It created a nation from sea to shining sea. Fewer people know that Pai Biter, a Chinese immigrant, worked on the Transcontinental Railroad and created the handheld American apple pie. When their labor was no longer needed, the Chinese were resented by other Americans who were unemployed during economic hard times. Chinese immigrants were scapegoated then, as Latino immigrants are scapegoated now. It was 1882, just one year after Emma Lazarus penned her famous poem that's now engraved on the base of the Statue of Liberty that the United States passed the first immigration law in American history to exclude a race, a group by race and class, the Chinese Exclusion Act. It was not repealed until 1943 when Chinese Americans, like my father, served in World War II. But the Chinese Exclusion Act was only repealed nominally since Chinese immigration from anywhere in the world was still limited to 105 Chinese per year. 
compared to the quota of 65,721 per year from Great Britain and Ireland. Even before immigration law legalized discrimination, other laws encouraged violence against Chinese laborers. The 1854 case of People versus Hall ruled that Chinese were non-white, and so like Indians, Africans, and mulattoes, not allowed to testify against whites in a court of law. This law declared open season against Chinese who were not, could not testify against their white assailants in a court of law. This law was eventually ruled a violation of the 14th Amendment. As a member of the Suffolk County Human Rights Commission, I'm pleased to inform you that a law was passed last June by the U.S. Congress. Undocumented workers can now give testimony to Suffolk County police without fear of deportation. There are flyers up here in English and in Spanish that tell you how to get in contact with the Human Rights Commission and to talk about the eligibility of those who use this program to be fast-tracked into eligibility for citizenship. During the 21 years I have been on this campus, one of the most significant changes to the face of this campus is due to Dr. Shirley Strum Kenny's vision and leadership. It is the beautiful Charles B. Wong Asian American Center which now welcomes everyone to this campus. It was also due to the labor of many Asian Americans who created software, the information superhighway, that created prosperity for Long Island and the nation. Charles Wong envisioned the center as a place where people could go to understand the immigrant experience. Charles Wong himself was an immigrant who came to Long Island at the age of eight in 1952 and faced discrimination in not being able to purchase a home on Long Island in certain neighborhoods because his family was Chinese. In his donation speech, Mr. Wong wanted the center to be a place where, quote, my children and your children will be able to participate in the experience of their parents on both sides of the Pacific to institutions like the Asian American Cultural Center at Stony Brook. As Dr. Kenny takes steps to secure her legacy for her leadership on this campus, may the vision and leadership that brought the Wong Center to this campus fulfill this noble dream. So let us see ourselves in Marcelo Lucero's life and death, our hope, our loss, and our redemption. The American experiment cannot long endure as a beacon of freedom if we forget our cherished ideals. We are now a diverse community running a relay race of faith in the democratic process, and we're lifted up by the winds of change. Betsy Kim, a Korean American active in getting out the API vote, said it memorably, Roses sat so Martin could walk. Martin walked so Obama could run. Obama ran so our children could fly. By God's grace, may our children fly. How can we make this a teachable moment, even as we realize that this momentary grief that was widespread now will be short-lived? We can commit ourselves to upholding immigrant rights as human rights, to remember that these rights were Marcellus and ours, and as Americans, it is American as Thanksgiving and apple pie. May this be our teachable.